What the fuck is that? Whatever we want to talk about, we're going to talk about it. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Esports Plus the Podcast. And today we got my boy, Mike fucking Stewart. What's, What's good, up, dog? What's up, man? Great to see you, bro. Yeah, man. You too. See you. Fuck. We're in your. We're in your fucking palace right now. We're in the fucking. I remember the first time I came into your your uh, Columbia location, and I was like, "What? <laughs> like, yeah, dude. It's fucking massive, dude. Like, it's like a industrial fucking building." Yeah, we're back mats. here in Columbia. Um, you did you did work for us back in the old space too. Remember when yes. we were upstairs? Yeah. And then we moved here. And yeah, dude, like this is like my dream dojo. But I mean, we're outgrowing this space to be honest with I you. I know, bro. I know. We're talking about buying a space and getting out of here in three years. So, but just buying your own, basically, like building, probably. We're gonna have to, man. Yeah. We're gonna have to to scale up the way we want. Hey, before we go, I got some things for you here. All right, let's do it. All right. Okay, got the this red. Guy's, this shit. guy's one of my day one supporters right here. All, day, all right, boy. And I got something else for you here. I don't even do, I don't even train, but let's go. I'll rock. I'll rep all day in the claw. No <laughs> laws with claws, baby. <laughs> You had the black cherry? Sponsored. I have had the black cherry. I actually, cheers. Oh, we'll open it first. Yeah, yeah. It's my first time drink, drinking on the uh, on the podcast, bro. Let's do it, dude. And now first time, really, well, now we've had a few beers in the dojo. We've definitely had, yeah. No and, laws and, with claws, bro. And in real life. No laws with claws. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Mm. I kind of like. It's pretty tasty. It, this one's not bad. I'm not going to lie. This one's not bad. Normally, I shit on these things. Well, the reason I like them is because it actually has more alcohol than a beer. Great. It doesn't have very many carbs. It only has two grams of carbs. And only has two grams of sugar. Good. Every bit of alcohol you drink is going to convert to sugar anyway. Sure. But by drinking these sugary... It makes it worse. Dude, you're just... You're compounding it. It's very it. light. It's light. No, I mean like when you drink it, it's not... You know when you drink a beer, you're like... Oh, heavy. Fuck. Too much carbonation. Way too heavy. You can drink this when you're thirsty. Like, you know, like an actual thirst quencher. Oh, I'm really how did this turn into okay? Let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did this turn into a, uh, well, a commercial for White Claw? Yeah, sponsored by we're not sponsored by White Claw at all. So that would be fucking awesome. Are we allowed to do this? Actually, I, listen. When you have your own kind of like, <laughs> we're gonna rogue in the shit out of this and just uh-huh. like, do whatever the fuck we want. You know what I mean? You can do whatever you want. Yeah, we're not selling it. You know, hey, cool. It's free promotion of the eight Why people would that they watch care? it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, so we we kind of don't have like a, tra- a directory of what we want to talk about. So let's just talk about whatever we want. Let's let's definitely start with how the fuck we first met. So I'll let you, I'll, what is your memory, sir? So I first met Corey. We were meat men. Okay, for those of you who don't know what meat men are, <laughs> uh, you drive around most of the time. In those days, we had a little piece of shit pickup truck yeah, a little s10 or- with a freezer on the back and a little converter inside and sometimes the converter didn't work you had to get dry ice, no dry ice remember yeah. that yeah most times and then uh yeah you drive around knocking on people's doors and getting chased by dogs and having guns pulled on you and have yeah. people cuss you out <laughs> and having people call you back two days later why the fuck did yeah. you sell my wife yeah. three freezer fools worth of steak Dick, bring come back come pick Just it up driving yeah. my people in the neighborhood hey how you doing and yep. and, and uh yeah, like that was. I, I'll tell you what, though, dude. What a great job that was. It it was it was the defining job in my life for mm-hmm. sure. For for many bad reasons <laughs> and many good reasons. I feel like two people work at do, do meet men stuff. Uh huh. Are drug addicts. I'm just being real. Just being a hundred. We worked with a lot. We of drug worked addicts. with a lot of drug addicts because I remember. I remember yeah. one time. Uh, then and then we upgraded at one point to the fancy vans. The vans, yes, or the freezer trucks. Oh yeah, I but forgot I like about the, the reefers. Better. The van, yeah. So I was like, yo, I was riding with two other guys. And I'm like, hey, I'm gonna take a little nap in the back of the van uh, until we get to the spot. We're supposed to be working in like PA. I wake up, we're like in Lexington Market, yeah. and I'm like, what Buying the meth. fuck are we? This, they were that's that's what they. Were. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck are we doing down here, guys? Yeah. And I was like, drop me back off of the shop, man. I don't want to be driving around with this shit in Bro, the truck all day. Yeah. Because you're already. I mean, how many times did you get pulled over by the police, dude? They fucked with us all bad, dude. But all the time, no matter where you were, mainly a lot in I PA. Got, I got locked up in PA, got, bro. I got locked up because I PA. had it in PA. There's different townships, you have to and you got to have a permit for each township. Every township. So like, and then you're driving these back country roads. Yep. I don't. I'm not a fucking geographer, yeah. dude. I don't yeah. know what township I'm in. Yep. I was like a mile outside the township, and they locked me up. Yep. Not not like we're gonna arrest you and give you a ticket. Took me. 
to jail. Julian Booked had to, you. Julian had to come bail me out. Damn! Shout out to Julian. Shout out Julian. Yeah. Dude. What's up, Julian? <laughs> that's amazing. No, that 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 type of shit. That's how I learned how I learned. I already knew how to drive a stick, but like, uh, bro, I started working there when I was like. 17 look man i learned a lot there dude same, same. how to drive a bigger truck first off yep. dude like yep. uh, dude my first day i like fucked one of the vans completely up the old white van Bru- yeah. like my first day and yeah. they're like dude you're not driving anymore. yeah you're not allowed to do it anymore <laughs> yeah no those <laughs> those Getting things stuck like literally when i i worked because i worked in the baltimore office before the westminster office opened when i was like 17 and like i wasn't even supposed to work there do you know my dad used to work there no, my dad. They called him the Rain Man. He's like Ronnie. Like literally, he's like a legend, Meat Man. I didn't my know that. My dad, bro. It's fucking like, it's like embarrassing. But like he. <laughs> anyway, so my first one of my first days, I was with this guy Shane, and I'm like wide eyed, fucking like, yeah. oh, this is just a sales job. It's awesome. They pump you up in the morning, blah blah yep. blah. So then, like, we get pulled over in like Rosedale or wherever. Yep, that down was in the Baltimore. office was in Rosedale. Yeah, and then like they, they arrest him because he had meth a pipe and all this stuff on them. And I'm like fucking not even 18. Yeah, don't know what we do. Yeah, and they were like, just drive the fucking truck. So I drove the truck back in a stick, never have driven a truck. I'm like, doo, 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 <laughs> like going up. But it was so, but it taught me real quick. Trial by fire, dude. Bro, it really did, man. And like, th- that's one thing I'll say about that job is it taught me to take no after no after no oh, after yes. no. Be- yes. Beat me the fuck up and, and just keep on going. And you that's, just become you know, like a callous you elephant, really do dude. like you can't you can't explain unless you've done door-to-door sales and especially something that like a lot of people like they don't want to fuck with you oh my god like you can't understand the amount of rejection that you just learn how to how to just swallow dude yep. and now doing this transitioning from <laughs> oh my god dude Day and it's, night, it's so much easier man yeah. because people actually want you know yeah they want to not bothering their lives. them they're they want they're coming in on their own accord and then it's just, uh, yeah, that job taught me so much about like, uh, I mean, I, I honestly, I knew nothing about sales up until that point because I yeah. worked for another martial arts school yep. and they were like, they would, they would kind of keep people in their own space. Sure. Like for example, I was a, the best instructor there, like yeah. hands down. Yep. Um, I knew, I studied so much about teaching and, and leadership. So you and, knew like the the brain the, you knew you knew how to like really teach someone not just like right fucking do it as a job yo dude because i like it so much yeah. i mean there's nothing more rewarding i mean i you know we joke about a lot of jujitsu instructors joke about it all the time but it is true man like a, lo- a lot of us would be doing this for free even if we sure. weren't getting paid for doing it we had regular jobs i can't imagine a day not coming into the dojo being with my friends, wearing comfortable clothes, being barefoot. It's just a very relaxed. Yeah, it's and It's a very violent environment, but it's a very relaxed environment because of the chaos. Because yeah. there's so much respect among everyone because anyone in here is a killer, you know? Yeah, no, you're right. And and, and I know you've been working in the martial arts world. You've oh, been yeah. doing, you know what it's like, man. Bro. You know that's a different vibe when you go into an MMA school or jiu-jitsu school as opposed to a kung taekwondo fu school or taekwondo. Or kung fu. 100%. It's no, different, dude. It's totally different. And And the last thing I'll say about the capital meets thing is this the the think of it like this not you because you know this but think of like put yourself in the situation you're driving around in an s10 a beat up s10 with the freezer on the back of the truck knocking on a stranger's door they are gonna in let, 96 degree heat. yeah they're gonna <laughs> let you in give them a meat show which you lay out all your steaks chicken oh, i love a good and meat pork, show dog. And, and if you give them a good meat show <laughs> they're gonna buy it show, yeah dog. but it's like Think of the concept, though. They're letting you in. They're letting a stranger in their house to show them and then buy food from the back of a truck. Like, bro, you got to be some type of fucking crazy to even like do that. Like, that's just, it's just crazy to me that that's a fucking. But that what we it did that. But like, what it teaches you is a lot of self belief. So the thing about it, it teaches you so much self belief because, like you were saying, it's a very, um, like kind of invasive type deal Whole. like you're going in these people's <laughs> houses and man some of the houses bruh. that we've seen the inside of the houses bro i can still i still want to gag bruh. thinking about some of the smells bro yes. listen i went into this house they had like it was a trailer they had maybe eight pit bulls like 20 fucking cats shit and everywhere s- shit and piss everywhere dude i kneeled on the ground soaked it in soaked in piss dude <laughs> And, and, and then I was like, I don't even want to put the food boxes no, on the ground because yeah. I know that they're not going to buy it. And no. then who the fuck am I? And then the thing is, if you don't sell it, 
and you open the case up, you own it. PNC. So so PNC, pick and choose, baby. Yeah. So like, like, and then and then we would take all the PNC down to the hood when yeah, people's EBTs came out and just give it shit. away. Yeah. Or I would buy it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I would. I, I ate a lot of that food, bro. Hundred yep. percent. I ate a lot of freezer burnt yep. burgers. Yeah, dude. those burgers <laughs> the are the shittiest burgers. packaging. Bro. Let's talk about something else, man. Yeah, yeah. Because we'll bullshit, we'll bullshit about Capital Meats all day. Cause all there's so day. many funny stories, dude. It's there's so many good stories, and there's just so much. And I was rambling, but the self belief thing is like, dude, when you make your first sale, sale, it's like your confidence. And I see the same thing here with my guys that are on that we're training in the sales yeah. team. And to their credit, dude, they did have a pretty good like process and script. And I had good trainers, dude. I remember Josh Charlton and, and uh, TJ. TJ, yeah. Trained me. Donnie, too. Donnie was a monster. Donnie, these guys are B sales yeah. guys, dude. You put them in an executive office a with wrap. a product that they believe in, and it's a wrap, dude. Yep, you're right. And a lot of them have moved on to, you know, and, and some of them still do it and still like it. And, like, to me, like, there's no, uh, I got to fly here on my mic. There's no judgment at all. No. Um, look at this fucking guy. Yeah, he's like, he's like you said cat shit, shit or piss, piss right? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what you live, cap is. Yeah. <laughs> nah, but I, I think, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely, it definitely, when you get your first sale, it's like, you're like, what the fuck? This actually works and I'm good at it. And then you just believe in yourself and it just, you know, and that transcends everything I've ever done has transcended from and, that. And, and, and also what it taught me is how to be responsible with my money because not me. there would be day. Well, dude, not at first, because there would be days where you would have $2,000 cash in your pocket. I never was used to having that much money at one yeah. time. That was the most money I'd ever seen in cash at one time was like yep. working at that job um, and just being like, dude, I have like. I'm going to go grab a beer. And do, 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 do. Or 10. Or 10, yeah. Dude, I mean, yeah. Think I about remember. when you start off during the day. You're already negative a couple hundo from gas, from renting, everything. From renting the car, from food. It's but, like, it, but that's good. It's good that they do that because it teaches you, like any good salesperson, you have to have some skin in the game. You dude. do. If, if there's no risk of, of losing anything then you you will slack off. I mean, we see it all the time, dude. Like, look, man, sales, dude, just not a lot of people are cut out for it. They're really not. I can, I can make someone a good instructor here. I can do it, dude. I've, done, I've taken someone who's not a great instructor and turned them into a great instructor. Read this book. Study people's yeah. uh, body language. Don't yell at people. Don't tell people sure. they're doing stuff wrong all the time. Build up your credit. That's a big thing we talk about here is like, and this can be applied to anything, is building up correction credit. If someone's constantly, na it turns into nagging if someone's always on you all the time. By the way, dude, is that a predator tattoo that you got? Yeah, man. What? Yeah, what? <laughs> the alien skull. What, dude? Yeah, he's, like he's like 10 years old, bro. How yeah. have I never noticed that that's Predator? You know yeah. Predator's like my favorite, right? I know, same. Yeah, I'm like a huge fucking fan. What? Yeah, I got Arnold and shit with the fucking M16, the grenade launcher. Dude, that's all Predator. Yeah, that's my Predator. That suit. is fucking Shout out to awesome, Matt Aversa dude. from Mateo Inc. in Westminster. Nice. Yeah, man. Hell yeah, dude. That looks... Yeah. This one looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. And it's old, too. Like... How did I not notice that, I don't dude? know. Because I know you it, have the... the uh, like the, the DC, DC shit, shit. One. yeah, yeah. You've had that for a really long time. Yep, I had this first. Dude, follow Bad Blood Designs. Yeah. On um Instagram. Yeah. I think he's the dude that like designed like the Predator costume and mask and shit like that. Dude. Stan Winston did that. Ugh, maybe Stan Winston created because did you the, see? Have you seen what it looked like before they made what that looks like? Uh uh. The, the, if you watch the behind, looking? it looks like the, a prey mantis. Really? Uh, uh, Sean Claude Van Damme was actually cast to play the Predator. And once they put him in the jungle and he realized how hot it was and how shitty it was, he, he quit. He, he quit. That's why Arnold. Bullshit, dude. I swear. Jean Claude Van Damme is too small to be Predator because the guy who plays Predator is a giant, a giant, like six yeah, five. I know, but no, he he was cast to play uh, the Predator, and then um, uh, so the design they had was like this ugly ass prey mantis looking thing, and then Stan <laughs> dude, Winston see this. came through. It's on the behind the scenes if you buy the DVD, the right okay. one. Though. I'll send it to you, but like it's pretty cool. You can find it on YouTube, I'm sure. But Stan Winston's the guy who created. What Tyrannosaurus, like Jurassic Park, any any okay. classic creature, alien, any classic creature. So this is a different guy. This is a different guy than he. But he makes like wearable predator masks, like that are quality. legit. Yeah, 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 yeah like no. like this, super cool. Stan Winston created the look of the predator. Wow. Yeah. Thank God, because then we would we fuck probably wouldn't be it. talking about. We'd fuck be like, no. this movie's fucking dumb. Yeah, and it had Arnold in it too. So I was like, I don't know. Which I love Arnold. Yeah, dude, I was about to say. No, no, I love him. I'm just saying, like, I'm yeah, glad the that best. they changed it because it probably wouldn't have done as well. Anyway. If I was in that spot when that kid drop kicked Arnold in the back, bro, 
Dude, there's, dude, I would have fucking smashed that kid's Those face. Those guys fucked him up. They really hurt him? Bro, did you see them? They, they gripped the shit out of him afterwards. His big ass body. He barely guards. moved, dude. He barely moved. He, I know. When Still he, solid, dude. Legit, dude. He's a that fucking That kid tank. jumped through the air. Running. And flying double kip to the spine. Dude. And, and he, like, like, he just like. Oh, oh. Yeah. He just, just like moved a little bit. Like, yeah. like, like, like he probably felt like someone just like bumped into yep. him. Tank. Why the and fuck would that kid plus, do that, dude? I, Psycho. He's like, I need, I, I need a Lambo. I need a Lambo or whatever. This flies really bothering me. Okay, dude. Kill it. This'll Use your fucking real, ninja. This will be some real karate kid shit right here. Yeah, you're going to like ruin the mic. Watch. No, I'm not. Fuck. It's all Fuck good. Fuck your mic up. You can bring it back to you, though. Like, twist it back to Sorry, you. Sorry, dude. No, just the, this, uh, grab the mic and then twist it your way. There you go. Sorry, dude. Messing no, up the whole podcast. You're good. No, it's, you're clearly not a fucking ninja, but you're. You used to, former. Former ninja. Now you're a jujitsu guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I changed my ways. You want to talk about that or you want to go yeah. another route? Yeah, yeah. Um, All right, let's talk about violence. Oh, man. That's one of my favorite things to talk about. <laughs> I mean, because well, you're in a violent atmosphere every single day. But like you said earlier, there's a respect thing to it. So it's like, it's not like people are in here fucking choking the people out to, for fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, in here is very controlled violence. Yeah. And yeah, like there is. The, the, the level of respect between training partners in here is like kind of a fundamental part of combat sports. Uh, whether it's wrestling, boxing, jiu-jitsu, mixed martial arts, judo, sambo. These are like, look, dude, these are the real deal martial arts. Like, yeah. No offense to anyone else out there, but like, if you do something other than what I trained, uh, training other than what I said, it might be bullshit. Like you Taekwondo, you think is bullshit? I mean... It's not maybe as practical in well. In here's, real world. here's something good that uh, I forget who I first heard this from. I think Lloyd Irvin tells a story about this, and uh, he he said he was talking to some guy, an old older martial artist once, and, it, and and one of the best things I've heard is every martial art is perfect for what it's created for. Every martial art is perfect for what it was created for. Okay. All right. Like using nunchucks. All right. Those come from a, a flailing uh, tool for rice fields. Okay. So if you're using that all the time, that's like your work tool. Yeah. And you have to fight. It makes sense to train with that. Sure. And also how to defend against it because the other guys be walking around with it. Sure. The reason why those high jump kicks are invented in Taekwondo, do you know why? Nope. Why? I don't do martial arts on a battlefield, so. but you work with a lot of martial yeah, arts. Yeah. On a battlefield, why would I ever need to kick someone? that tall people aren't that tall yeah especially in asia yeah so why would i ever need to kick that high think about it. battlefield why would they be up that high what would they be riding Corey? oh horses that's oh, why damn so they gotta to jump dismount it. to dismount Holy horse shit. Ho- horse horseback uh riders in the battlefield that's fucking crazy. that's what that's what i've heard i mean i don't know if that's true or not but it that's makes sense fucking sounds like why true. would you need, why else would you need to kick that high yeah so When's the last time you had to defend yourself with a guy on a horse or yeah. with a samurai sword or with a pair of nunchucks? It's just, I don't have time to waste, bro. I got you. You that know, makes so sense. I'd much rather take a boxing class or study jujitsu. I think jujitsu is the best for self defense because someone smaller can be somebody bigger. And that's what really turned me on to it is, is learning it and uh, getting beat by smaller, older dudes. That I'm like, this guy's a, uh, an he's old a guy, or he's, yeah. or or even looking at a guy that's make, maybe a little bit fat, a little bit out of shape. But yeah. if he's a black belt, dude, it don't matter when you're a white belt. You're yeah. gonna get chewed All up. All technique, you're gonna get fucked up. That's changing now, though, man. Like, what do you like, mean? well, I think that like the blue belts of today are getting like like these competition level, like world champion blue belts. They're they're on a different level than even some brown and black belts. I really? think, bro, I can tell the difference. Wait, man. wait, it takes like ten years to get a black belt in jujitsu, yeah. right? But think about it: if a kid's been wrestling since he was five, and mm-hmm. weight training, and just do maybe just doing another sport like football, but like as a high level athlete. Yeah. After high school, man, and college ends, what do you do? Yeah. You know where there's not a lot of space for men to be competitive no, anymore, you're right. and I think that's what leads to a lot of the more extreme violence. That. Men are being a little bit, it's like, where's the pressure valve, dude? And when you constantly have a pressure valve like this every day, it's just letting off a little bit of steam every day, every day. It's good for you, man. And also, jujitsu encourages a really healthy lifestyle where you're, you want to be outside. You want to drink more water. You want to be around people. Yeah. That's important for your mental health, dude, is, is having a support system. I can't tell you how many students, bro, I've literally like talked off the ledge. Like, yeah. listen, bro, your team needs you. 
don't do this. Yeah. Like, you know, and that's like, that's powerful, man. There's not a lot of jobs where you get to have influence on people like that. No. And I'm a leader. I'm a leader, dude. I'm a leader of men. You know, I have other female instructors in here. Like Bethany, you see all come in and Jen and, and Laura. They're my female leaders, dude. I don't, I don't understand women as much as they do, dude. Yeah. So, like, I can lead them through jujitsu, But, look, dude, I'm here to lead dudes. I know what guys are thinking. And I, I, I know what they need in their life. And that's to be fucking killing shit, hunting shit, fishing, <laughs> punching people, drinking beer, being a little bit, taking some risks, man. Like not just sitting in your fucking cubicle all day and being bored all day and then coming home and turning the TV on. We've used having 30, being 30 and having kids as an excuse to get out of shape and yeah. be sedentary, bro. Yeah. I mean, so many dudes I know have just fallen off and it's like, oh, you know, dad bod. I'm like, bullshit, dude. Yeah. What the fuck dad are you talking bod. about? Yeah. Yeah. Look, man, I get a little dad bod of myself every now and then, but, I, but it's good to be in an environment like this because the other good thing is you're, you're constantly being checked and reinforced by your teammates, dude. I mean, like, we're ruthless with each other. Be like, yo, dude, you're getting a little... Yeah, you, uh, you have you're to be losing a little bit of weight. Yeah. You're, you need to lose a little bit of weight, man. It's accountability. You feel, you feel slow. You feel sluggish. Yeah. Or, in the same respect, you need to gain a little... I told a guy, that, I'm like, dude, you need to eat some more protein. You need to be eating healthier, sleeping better. Sure. You're, you're just frail, bro. Like, you need to eat some real food. Like, what's your diet like? Yeah. And sure enough, it's like tacos and fucking Cheetos and yeah. hot dogs all day and yeah. soda. I'm like, okay, cut that shit out. Um, the good news is you have a super high metabolism. Start putting this just as much as we should care about people wanting to lose weight. We should care about just maintaining a healthy weight, not even weight, just how you feel. We all feel better when we are not being fat pieces of shit. Yeah, no, you're right. You made a post. I think it was yesterday or whatever. Like when you finally found out like what your ideal weight is and it wasn't like because you were so before I too bef fat or too, too right. skinny, you just feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, aesthetically, dude, like, I mean, who cares, dude? We're training for combat here. We're not training for looks. Yeah. Look at fighters' bodies in the UFC. Look at Nick Diaz. I was going to say, some of these dudes are not in shape. Look at Daniel Cormier. Yeah. There's a funny meme of him standing on the beach in, like, these, like, stupid-looking shorts, <laughs> and he's, like, squinting like that with his <laughs> gap tooth. Dork. And it's like uh, when you're on vacation and – you tell everyone you're the two-time world champion and nobody believes you. Yeah. His belly's hanging over. Yep. Man, imagine some goon who doesn't watch the UFC trying to bully Daniel Cormier while yeah. he's on vacation with his kids. Him. Dude, it'd be a wrap. Yep. Game over. That's insane. There's guys like that walking around, man. Yeah. And, and what I like so much about training is like uh, training people is like a lot of these people that we train, like they're like, they're kind of nerds, man. They're yeah. kind of nerds which I like because they're very cerebral. It attracts a certain type of person. I think when people think of a jiu-jitsu school, they think it's going to be like a lot of meatheads and shit like oh, that. Oh, for sure. And it's listen, I love training in those environments, like yeah. more hardcore gyms, like more MMA style. Yeah. I'm all about it, dude. And we have classes like that here, but we keep those people away from gen pop, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, because you, you... Dude, it's, like, dance, like, it's like dangerous killers in a prison. They got to be kept separately, yeah. dude. No. Otherwise, they, they, they have to be self-serving. They have to have hard training rounds you have to be relentless with them when you're training with them because they compete a lot and you yeah. need to get them ready for competitions. No. Dude, most of the time in here, like one of my guys here, NASA is, is close to here. One of my guys is like one of the top, literally rocket scientists for NASA. Damn. So by day he comes in and determines, you know, what meteors we need to make sure don't hit the earth and do all these. He's, <laughs> dude, the shit he That's does insane. is insane insane dude you should you should hear when uh i bring up flat earth to him dude he uh, are you a flat earther no no i'm not a flat earther okay good no right. uh -uh. he's probably no, like no. you're a fucking idiot well i just i just do it to fuck with him a little bit i'm like so what you think about this flat earth dog he's <laughs> like mike yeah shut, shut up <laughs> it's fucking round. maybe he's covering it up dude look into it well you make uh you know you made a good point and so i've i've been into a, a lot of martial arts schools and filmed and talked to students and talked to owners and parents and one thing that always comes up is like the people that come do martial arts, no matter what it is, jujitsu, mm -hmm. whatever, are the kids that like sucked in sports, weren't accepted. You like get the mm -hmm. like the that degenerates, was me, really, honestly. That was a hundred percent me. So that's true. I, you know, I mean, when's I the last time a a four or three sport athlete in high school came and was like, you know what, I want to do martial arts, bro? We're getting more of it now with the popularity of the UFC it's now. Trendy, yeah. Uh, people are seeing, especially like like you're saying the athletes. I got this kid named. Ooh, pardon me. I got this kid named uh, Dion. Okay. In my Finksburg school, dude. Killer. Stud football player, dude. 
never has done jujitsu before in his life, start grappling with him and like couldn't take him down. Because he's probably I, a I'm natural. playing though with him though because he's a boy, new guy. I don't want to intimidate him. But you could already tell he's like. A I'm natural. like I'm gonna have to actually really try to, to beat this guy. Yeah. And I'm like, so where have you trained? Like, what have you done? And he's like, I've never trained before. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you have to have you have to have trained. He's like, no. I'm like, you've wrestled. Yeah. And he's like, no. I'm like, something, dude. Like something. He's like, oh yeah. Well, I was a like middle linebacker in college. I'm like, okay, dude. Yeah, there you go. So like, yeah, that is. Look, bro, I'm telling you straight up, and this might hurt some people's feelings out there. You take a collegiate D1 middle linebacker and put him against the average, out of shape, untrained, traditional martial artist black belt, that black belt will get killed, bro. For sure. This magic touch shit and, and, oh, and pressure points are and stuff. Oh, hilarious, Oh, I bro. love it, dude. I love it. Hilarious. I love it. And you know what? It's, it's, it's nice that we get to, like demystify a lot of the bullshit yeah. and i've lived on both sides of the train tracks dude we were kind of talking about it before dude i did taekwondo for and from the time i was seven till i was 14 got my black belt there uh i did ninjutsu for fucking i don't know how long got my black second degree black belt in that japanese jiu-jitsu which was kind of like tied to that so i have three black belts in in other traditional martial arts that didn't help me at all no. when I started jiu-jitsu. I'm a white belt just like everyone else, man. Now, what I did have the benefit of is that I wrestled in high school. So, and I, that's, I honestly wish I would have taken that more seriously. Sure, yeah, of um, course, in, in hindsight. But, but that gave me a base. And that was the other thing, dude. When I started wrestling, none of my martial arts training like mattered. The kids that had been wrestling since they were five. They'll fuck you up. They'll fuck you up, dude. So... Like if you can put your kid in jujitsu, you should definitely put your kid in jujitsu. But if you can't, wrestling is a really good uh, alternative, and judo too, of course. But judo and jujitsu are usually taught at the same places. You can access that. Wrestling, anyone can access. It's very inexpensive. Like when when I have a student that truly can't afford lessons in jujitsu, and like I, I want to see them, or they live too far away, I'm like, listen, don't go to this bullshit karate school down yeah, the street. Yeah. Straight up. Like, don't waste your fucking money. Don't waste your time. Yep. It is a waste. And people are like, well, there's other good things that you can get. Yeah. Listen, you can get, if, if you want the respect and, and the focus and all those things, put them in Cub Scouts and then just take them running once a day. You'll get the same thing, right? <laughs> if, it's, it's, it's cheaper, man. It's, 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 it's and funny. it's smarter. Yeah. No, I agree. I like, you know what's different about you, though, as a, as a martial arts school owner, is you're not, you have, you have ego. Everyone has ego, but not the kind that's going to draw business away from you where I go into school. I dis I disagree. I, th I think that I, not but, when they come in. No, you're different. Maybe from the outside. You're an anomaly anyways. And I've always told you this, like on social media, you say crazy shit that like a normal school owner would never say because they're so, they would be scared to kind of, you know, maybe divide their population or divide right. the people they could attack. But well, you know what I say to that is, well, go ahead. Continue no, no, what no you're I was going to say, but like when I come in here and film videos and testimonials, you kind of like let me do my thing because we know each other. But every school I go into, they are like, yo, you're not going to get my sword wall or my my paper, my newspaper clippings of me in 1905. I'm going to my white wall, on, dude. <laughs> on, China, uh, on the Great Wall of China. You know? Yeah, get this picture of me. Yeah, yeah. We joked about that before, but it's like, that's what, bro, they are legit when I go in there. They're like, my sword wall, my wet. I'm like, bro, you're an, you're an idiot. Like, that's all stuff you like. But you've never, you've never been like that. So, like. Well, you know, jujitsu's not like that. And, and, and. You know, man, I don't know if you can really talk about this or not because you've worked with so many different clients. But do you agree or disagree with me? Jiu-jitsu people are just fucking cooler than, than the people that do other martial arts, man. You yeah. know why? Because we take a lot of ass whippings, dude. Yeah. We get punished a lot, dude. Yeah. I think you're more practical, too. These people, like I said, those, those people that they're, they're great people. They're awesome. I love them. I have dear friends that are in different martial arts. But. It's more of like either a holistic or a like a different thing that that's not a practical like in real life. Am I really going to do a bicycle kick like Liu Kang and yeah. take out eight and, people? And that's cool. Like, it's cool if you want to do that stuff. It's cool if you want to spin both staffs and it's cool if you want to use that. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. If 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 you're doing that, that's fine. Just understand it has no bearing on practicality in real combat. Yeah, that's where they get. They trick themselves. Sure. Like. They would start believing their own bullshit. Like, oh, yeah, man, fuck. If I can't do jujitsu because, dude, I would, I would just kill you. Yeah. The shit I know is too lethal, man. I can't be, <laughs> I can't be using that in your dojo. I don't want to come in there and, like, 
I'm yeah. like, oh, it's cool, dude. You can just come in and try to kill one of my black belts. And then I look at it. It's like, when the fuck have you ever need to kill somebody? Yeah. Like I said, every martial art is great for what it's created for. No, I, I you know, agree. You That's see a some good of these statement. styles that are like, fucking kill, kill, kill. Smash the guys. Like Krav Maga. St- like Krav Maga, dude. Well, when have you, you're not on an Israeli fucking strike I know. Team, That's dude. what blows me you about don't those need, guys. You don't need to be. And I have a lot of, the good news about Krav Maga is a lot of them do jujitsu because they understand that they have that gap in their sure. game. And, uh, but it's like, when's, I don't know. It happens, but we've when been you, training, we've been training more and more Krav Maga I saw people, you have. and I, and I see, There's some and I see that I there are some very open-minded people in that space. Um, so I've been trying to like diss them a little bit less, <laughs> but dude, I'll still fuck up any Krav Maga person around here. Come yeah. on, dude, I'm going to get you on the ground. And then what are you going to do? And people do think, yes, does that sound egotistical? Does that sound arrogant? Maybe, but there's only one way to find out if I'm right or wrong. Yeah. And that's the difference between jujitsu. We go to war in here every day, dude, on the mat. So it's not like it's anything different to tap out a fucking white belt that doesn't know. You're a white belt. If you're doing any other martial art, but you've never operated in, in submission grappling, you're a white belt. Yeah. You're going to get tapped. Well, I'll do this. I'm like, you're not going to do that, dude. Yeah, because yeah. we study striking too. Oh, you do? Fuck yeah, man. We just started a really uh, good Muay Thai program here. I say Muay Thai and is every, tight. And, every, and our jiu-jitsu style is a little bit different because it's more self-defense based and a little bit less sport based. So a couple of days a week, you know, we wear no gi, put the gloves on. And it's not like an MMA class because people that are going to attack you on the street, they're not going to be throwing very precise no. sloppy. technical shots. It's going to be very sloppy, but it's going to be very chaotic. And it's going to be, they're going to be going as hard as they can, yeah. as fast as they Doing can. Doing whatever they can. Doing whatever they can. Headbutts, yeah. elbows, things you're not going to see in, a, in hitting you in the back of the head. Things you're not going to see even in training for MMA. Sure. And, but it's done in a very controlled way. And, it, and it, 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 it gives people some perspective of, okay, this is how real combat is. It's very fast. You're going to get more like, dude, if me and you are just grappling, I can pace myself. I can get on top of you and then like take a break. Yeah. And, and, and breathe. And still not have me move or do anything. Yeah. And yeah. just, and just re gain my energy. Dude, in a real fight, like time is not your no. a luxury. Like, no. like time's against you. Yeah. Um, so and you yeah. Get, and you'd be surprised when you get into a real fight, how tired you get, how quick, how quick, how That's quickly because you get tired. Of the, when you experience an adrenaline dump. It does a couple of things that are really good for you. It enhances your speed, your strength. Um, it, it inoculates you to a lot of pain. Like you see fighters like have their face split open. And like, people are like, how's this guy like not, not in any pain? Well, your body is experiencing an adrenaline dump. And that's, yeah. that's, that's going to numb you to, to any sort of – your body knows that it's, it's, it's in, it's in combat up. mode. Yeah. It's, it's, it's go time. Um, the bad news about that is when the adrenaline wears off, exhaustion, dude. And that's when a lot of, and that's when a lot of people crack, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like it's great to be part of a system that is like so well tested and having such good leadership and mentors, instructors that came before me to be like, listen, dude, that shit you were doing before. Don't fucking do that. Do it this way. Yeah. But you also have to be very open-minded. I mean, like I never have the day I got my blue belt, I never wore any of my black belts and taught with them ever again. There's a lot of people I think would have a hard time. What do you mean? So when I got my blue belt in jiu-jitsu, mm-hmm. um, when we first opened the school, we were kind of teaching like a mix mash, yeah. and I wore my black belt. Oh. I wore my old black one of my old black belts. From a different this is from arts. This is from ninjutsu. Yeah. So I was like, okay, like this is cool. And then I got mentored, and the dude's like, dude, it's kind of like not cool. Yeah, like, like take it off. You're not like a you're wearing belt. a jujitsu gi and a black belt. Like, people are going to think you're a jujitsu black belt, and you're fucking not. You're not even yeah. close. And like, <laughs> yeah, you gonna, just got your black belt. Someone's going to come in. I just got my black belt a few months ago. I know. So that was, what, that was like 10, 11 years ago when yep. that conversation happened. Yeah. About 10 years ago. Um, so, yeah, dude. Just the, And that's the other thing. The amount of time that it takes, dude. If, if, if you know someone that's, uh, you know, a brown or a black belt or even a purple belt on jiu-jitsu, you can pretty much guarantee that that person's a pretty hardworking individual. Yeah. Um, They're persistent. Like, it's hard on purpose, you know? It's, yeah. It's, it's, we make the classes hard on purpose because it's not, that we, it's not that we want people to quit, but, like, we kind of do want the wrong people to quit. Yeah. 
And I mean, of course, you want everyone to when all they the start, everyone when they start, dude, is like the, you know they make the funny white belt uh, starter pack memes. Yeah, and everyone's like, "Yeah, dude, like yeah, jujitsu, bro." Oh my god, man! It's yeah, so fucking annoying, <laughs> dude. And I, I'm like, I'm part of these groups, and I'm like, this fucking guy's gonna quit in eight months. Yeah. Just watch. Sure enough, dude. People that are and like you were saying before, the people that are like kind of loud about it and like, oh, I'm fuck yeah, dude. I'm doing jits, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, jits, bro. You know, fucking wearing their jujitsu shirt out to the UFC fight at yep. the Green Turtle and being loud and yeah. shit like that. Like they want everyone to know what's going on with them, you know. Yeah. And look, dude, we've done that before. We but we take the whole team out and we kind of make it a fun event for yeah. everybody. And you know, I tell everyone to rep their gear and like you know, but we're very it's an older, more reserved crowd, you know. Yeah. But uh. Those guys get weeded out really quick. We were talking about before the people that are kind of misfits and man, now there's a place to fit in. Yeah, you know, that's now true. there's a that's... place. Now there's a place that you can belong. Nobody sits on the bench in here, bro. Yeah, I don't give a fuck how bad you are at it. You're gonna do it every day until you don't suck at it. Man, I feel like I'm really sucking today. Yeah, you did suck today. Keep sucking Come back until tomorrow. you don't suck, bro. Yeah, that's the ticket, man. Helson, Helson Gracie, my instructor, says it best, man. I'm like, how do you get better, dude? He's like, it's very simple, man. Day by day. That's it, dude. Yeah. And that's with anything. And you can apply that to anything. Everything, not dude. just martial arts. Everything. Well, you don't see a lot of people at high levels in jiu-jitsu that are losers. That's true. I mean, they're usually pretty good. At, they got something else going on. Yeah. Or they're so dedicated to the art that that's, you know. But most black belts that I know, man, they have multiple hobbies. And they're very skilled at other things. Sure. And that's very important, man. Um, I think it was Miyamoto Musashi, the most famous samurai ever, said that warriors need to have another outlet, whether it's art or music or poetry or whatever. whatever. This fucking fly is <laughs> dark again, dude. <laughs> you little fucker. He loves you. He's your buddy. Dude. I'll zoom in on him and like... What? Fuck that fly, like, fuck man. Fuck you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, fly. Nah, but yeah, that's, that's interesting. I always wondered, though, because like the whole other martial art thing works because like they have a kid's program for money. It's good. And I always wondered how... I mean, your kids' program probably rocks. Like, I mean, you got yep. over 700 members between your two schools or three schools. And, like, how do you do a kid? I don't want to take this down, like, a fucking martial arts journey of, like, how to run a school. But I'm right. saying, like, a lot of people will say, well, ju you know, jujitsu is, like, a traditional martial art. And you got to really, like, stick with it or whatever. But it's hard to get clients and da-da-da-da. So. But you have to make it, f like, here's the thing. You have to be a fun and engaging instructor. It doesn't matter what you're teaching. I can make something boring that's true. Fun. That's remember, true. remember being in school and having like the shit teachers. Oh yeah. And it's like a subject that you would actually like and, yeah. and be good at and being like, God, this guy is just so painfully yeah. fucking boring. Yeah. I don't like like my writing classes, my literature class is like always my favorite. And a few times, man, I got stuck with a few teachers that just sucked the fun out of yeah. it, dude. On the opposite of the spectrum, I never really cared that much about history. And I had this um Ancient medieval history teacher named Mr. Oliphant. I'm still with him. Shout out, Mr. Oliphant. I'll tag you. Uh, <laughs> dude, still communicate with the guy to this day. Yeah. Like, After he was like fucking that, yeah. awesome, dude. Yeah. And he was like, he was the best. Yeah. Like, he could get on my level, dude. We were in the library one day, and we were learning about the Black Plague. Nice. And we're looking through this book, and, and like, we're talking and stuff like that. And he's like, I was with my boy Joe Campitelli. And he's like, uh, he's like, Stuart Campitelli. Let me just be real with you. And he closes the book. He closes the textbook. He's like, break it down for you real quick. Black plague. You're, you're dying. Everyone around you is dying. Yeah. The world is fucking falling apart. Every, everyone's dying. Yeah. It's a wrap. It, it, you know it. Yeah. You're either going to go to church and repent every day and, and pray that you go to heaven, or you're going to go out every night and get fucked up and have orgies. Yeah. Now, which one would you choose? The, the orgy one. Obviously. I'm like, yeah, I choose orgy too. All yeah, day. I mean, I mean, it's like, why, you know, why wouldn't you? I mean. You get fucked up and just, if you're going to die anyway. You're going to die. That's like if the doctor was like, listen, you got 24 hours to live. Does God gonna really do? care about you if he's putting you in that situation? That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, I'm not even a religious person either. And I just, I don't know. I feel like. I used to be, man. Really? I grew up, I grew up uh, in a very religious household. My mom was like a Sunday school teacher. Damn. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, big time, bro. Damn. I never missed a vacation Bible school camp. Um, I, like, <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, knowing you now, that's like, what? Youth group. Uh, I went to youth group for the video games for, like, a week and then left. They had a few hot chicks back in the day, and that's the only reason we really it, went. Yeah. And there was a few kids I was friends with that were skateboarders, and I was like, 
I guess I was like a believer, but I was just regurgitating like what the pastors and what my like were family you. were like telling me that I should believe. Yeah. And I honestly, dude, like martial arts, like did that for me too, man. Like open my mind to being like, think for yourself, independence, do things for yourself. Think for yourself. I'm really big on that, man. Yeah. I'm really big on that. I think you need to be able to. It, you need to be able to defend yourself, man, just in case. Yeah, no, I agree. It's I'm, just like I have these fire extinguishers in here, yeah, bro. I don't bring the fire extinguisher in here and being like, I hope I get to use this yeah, today, no. dude. Like, I hope, I hope the place starts burning down and I can use this fire extinguisher. Yeah. And, like, I know you had the guy on that was great, man, Anthony. Uh, Anthony Davies. Davies talking about the gun shit. Yeah, dude. It's the same thing. You don't buy a gun being like, I hope I get to fucking shoot know, somebody yeah. and kill no them No one today, ever dude. says that. That would be great if no, I would just get to use this thing. A gun owner doesn't Look, think man, like that. Look, man, concealed carry owners are commit less crime than the police. Of course, yeah. Statistically, concealed carry owners commit less crime than the police. Yep. Think about that, dude. Think about that. So by defanging... Good people that have good intentions that are not breaking any laws. They're going. Do you know how hard it is in Maryland to go through that whole process? I do know dude? how hard it is. It's fucking it's, hard. Maryland man. is one of the. Which growing up, I didn't know that Maryland was is is one of the hardest states in uh, the country. outside of New York and California, dude. It's probably the worst. Yep. And there's things about it that make it worse than them. I know. But look at Baltimore. I know. What a great project that's worked out to be. Yeah, I know Baltimore. And and and, and dude, I know this is a I know this is a, a hot topic and like it's something that people don't want to talk about, but dude, gun laws are very racist and sexist, bro. What do you mean? So, if you think about it, anyone that's gone through this process knows that it's first off super expensive, man. Yeah. Super in Maryland. Expensive. In Maryland. In, in Maryland, yeah. it's it's very expensive. Yeah. To uh to apply you have to take this class that costs money. Um, you have to you have to get fingerprinted. You have to complete a background check. You're in three to five hundred before you. you even they do interview anything. your spouse. It's not easy, dude. No. It's it's not easy. Think people are like oh just go buy a gun. No, it doesn't work like that. No. Now, if you want to go buy a hunting rifle, that's a different story. But to get a, a pistol or, or or certain types of guns, they keep adding to that list, and it does nothing. Yeah. Like no, it doesn't. It's it's. Uh, but, but getting back to why it is sexist, why it is racist, um, if you're not a business owner and you don't have a reason, a good, what they call it, like a justifiable reason, yeah. you're not, you can't, it's, it's not even worth it to apply. Yep. So what does that make everyone else? Just peasants? Like I'm lucky cause I'm a business owner and my, I have friends that, um, have businesses too. And it's been, you know, not impossible to get it, but it's, it's fucking costs a lot of money Yeah. and a gun costs a lot of money. And then you got to get a safe for the gun. Yep. And then you got to get ammo. And you got to get all the shit. So, an, so it's so it's, so it's an expensive thing on its own, without the government sticking their fingers in it and then making you go through this bullshit licensing process. When who are the people most at risk of real violence and need to protect themselves more than anyone? Are the are minorities in these fucking communities? A lot of them moms, that are in need of protecting their children, but the government doesn't look at them like they're life is worth anything but a business owner who's got money who's got money and, and can afford let's it let's fucking let's let's just we're gonna let these people have it because we can charge a lot of fucking money and put a shitload of red tape in front of them to order to get it and make the barrier of entry very high so that only certain people can get it it's fucking racist man no, that, sexist. That, actually i never thought of it like that but you're right because maryland so maryland is um when you're talking about the business owner thing is a uh, may issue state so like may issue um, you're not a guarantee exactly. it's not a guarantee so it's not a shall issue state um right. so which means uh, unlike other states like Virginia um North Carolina any other place like that um, unless you're a felon yeah obviously unless there's, if, yeah. there's things that disqualify you of course so if you're if you are like good to go whatever and that's you that's the other are, thing too like shall, in Maryland people are like well I'm like if you're a felon you can't even buy you, can, you can't no you can't even buy a gun no no gun no a rifle a shotgun nothing nothing you can't do anything so yeah what do you think those guys are like? Darn it. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm a felon. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to, okay, I yeah. just won't, I just that's won't. That's what get I a talked gun. to Anthony about. On, that's what I said. I was like, you know, what, when's the last Here's time the a gangbanger if, went if and you, bought If you, know, you went a gun. to apply for your thing, it's going to take a few months to go through Easy. the entire process. Easy. We could go down to North Avenue right now with $300 cash and buy, and a, buy a fucking gun. Yep. Easy, dude. Yep. Easy peasy, dude. Yep. It would be easy. And if you want to go shoot somebody, here's the thing you cannot illegalize intent. Yeah. 
look at the crime sprees in London of people getting stabbed. You know what they're trying to. You know what they're trying to do, you know you know trying oh, to do in London now, right? What with the they're Brexit? trying to limit oh. knives and make it so the top the top of the knife can't be so basically like a, a like a cleaver, dumbass looking knife without a point. What? This is real legislation, dude. They're trying to have knife control. Come on, bro. That's insane. For Come real? on. Really? Look it up. That's insane. I don't know 100%, but I heard yeah. that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on Facebook, bro. It's fucking real. Yeah. No, yeah. No one takes anything I serious. I saw it on bro. Babylon B. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucked. No, I, I agree with you. And I, I am, like like I say in a lot of my podcasts, I'm, I'm, I'm mainly left and liberal in a lot of things, except for the Second Amendment for some oh, reason. Oh, me too, man. I just, I, I, I'm pro-choice. I think that if you want to smoke weed and you should be able to just don't interfere with my ability to protect myself, myself yeah. and don't fuck with my money yeah. the government has a track record of being horrible with money yeah i don't trust them with yeah. my self-protection i don't trust the government with my life i don't trust them with my money yeah why would you yeah i know and the same people that are like don't trust the government fuck fuck the government but only the government should have guns yeah it's like what yeah what are you talking about how does that make any sense at all? Yeah, no, that's true. And I think you're seeing it right now in Hong Kong. Was all you know what's going on over there with all the protests yes. and stuff? So yeah. so they they are envious of what we have over here. Yeah. Look, bro, I was telling somebody this the other day. It's just like no person is perfect. Sure. Nobody's perfect, man. No business is perfect. No entity created by man is perfect. We as humans are imperfect. But America's pretty fucking good. Yeah. If you want to be the best at something, on the planet, if you want to be the best doctor on the planet, if you want to be the best athlete on the planet, if you want to be the best scientist on the planet, where are you going to go? America. You're going to fucking come here, I sound man. like a redneck. America. America, bro. America. No, you're right. It's, it's Let's cheers the claws to yeah. America right now, dog. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo. Real talk, though. No, 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 you're right. And that's, that's like... My thing, with, and now, and with, now, even the best, some of the best jujitsu, sorry, <laughs> no, some good. of the best jujitsu schools on the planet are not in Brazil. They're here, dude. Really? Atos, Hensel Gracie Academy in New York. They're pretty, tenth planet. Eddie Bravo. Ten, yeah, Bravo is Dude, some of the best grapplers. There's still tremendous talent in Brazil, but you got a you got American top team here. Yeah. I mean, the best UFC fighters are all here, hands That's down. That's true. Are they American? The Brazilians a lot are training here now too. Really, dude. It's it's the free market, man. People can come here and make a lot of money. Of course. So then, what what do you what's your stance on immigration then? Well, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I, but, no, yeah. no, no, man. I, I I actually have a very uh, interesting viewpoint on this because my wife's family are immigrants. She's Dominican. I say where, she's yeah, half Dominican. I say your wife is definitely here. not. She's super liberal, bro. Gringo. I know what I'm saying like she, she's like, not gringo, bro. No, no, she looks Spanish almost. She's half she's half Dominican. So her father's 100 percent Dominican. Okay. And uh, all her brothers are, well, most of her, she's got five brothers. Three of her brothers are 100% Dominican, and her other two brothers are half like her. Okay. Um, and I think uh, immigration is great, man, because I, I think who it hurts, I think when people enter the country illegally, it's, it's, it's not great. But then, man, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go too deep here, but fuck it. Should we do it? I mean, it's up to you. I can always edit it out. So let's not edit it. Let's no. go. All right, dude, go. I think <laughs> that a big thing. <laughs> Yo. I actually hate to edit it, so I'm glad. Fuck that, like, editing yeah. the shit, know, bro. Come I on, I don't give a fuck. All right. So uh, drunk off the claw. Let's go. I'm not, I'm I'm not getting, getting <laughs> drunk off one white claw, dude. Come on, I can, I'm a better drinker than that. I'm just kidding. No, I'm wasted. But I'm not. I'm not wasted though. <laughs> You want another one? Yeah, let me have another one. I only got to drive like an hour, so. I'm getting toasted. So, um, anyway, immigration. Okay, dude. Go here's, there. Here's, go. Okay, here's what people fail to realize. <laughs> Why are these people coming here? The CIA are, oh. are some fucking Bruh. ruthless, cutthroat, terrible motherfuckers. Yeah. We have destabilized Latin America so badly, dude. I don't think people realize, and I don't want to get into every little skirmish that we, because like, dude, we're basically at war down there. It's it's very Constantly. clandestine. It's not it's not televised. It's not talked about. Of course not. But we have done a lot to destabilize quite a few Latin American countries, and that's why they're fucking coming here because the places that they live are are, are completely trashed. It fucking sucks. They're either being ran by the cartels. Yeah. Which. 
we fucking help. I know. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. And a lot of people, if you just start talking about that, you're nuts, dude. You're crazy. Just like this pedophile ring, dude. Yeah. I was, dude, we've been talking about this Bro, shit for a while, I know, dude. I know, I know. And it's like, now it's like, oh, it's not so crazy now, is it, yep. dude? Now it's mainstream. And it's like, the Epstein, I, if you I'm look talking at, about the Epstein stuff. Yeah, of course, yeah, dude. Yeah, if yeah. you, and if you, if you look at, well, I get a different lens into that because one of my students here, um, is the head of the Maryland State Police Internet Crimes Unit. So they ca- they catch all these fucking people doing crazy shit all the time, dude. Sure. So to me it's very believable because like I've I've heard the stories and like that guy's entrenched in that world. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, this is believable. Yeah. Um so well there's proof. There's every evidence every there's... conspiracy like sounds crazy until, until And I think people don't get I don't think real. people really understand the definition of conspiracy either. People hear the word conspiracy Tinfoil. and they're like, Tinfoil yeah, they're like, hat. oh, this is fucking crazy. Yeah. Dude, if me and you say, okay, Rob over there in the office, let's go kill Rob tonight and fucking take all of his shit, which I would never do because I love Rob and I would never hurt anyone because- <laughs> And I would never murder anyone because I, I would never, murder. I would never murder anyone because no. self-defense is not murder. So, um, if we, but if we, we do that, we did what we, though? we conspired with yeah. one another sure. to fucking do something. That's all it is. You think the government is, you got to think about some of the fucking, and like I said, this is the best country on the planet. If you want to be number one at something, yeah. if you want to be the richest person on the planet, if you want to be the rest, I don't give a fuck what yeah. it is. Yep. Um, not to say that other countries are not great at, and, and, and there's not. You can't achieve greatness if you if you live someplace else, but there's just so much access to good um, resources and education and yep. and people. I believe that we are a great nation of great people, dude. We're too divided right now. Everyone's great, dude. I we know. have we have we're so these divided. people. We have more in common, like like even though we're a little bit more left leaning, I would say we have more in common. With some right leaning people 100%. too. We're all most of us are kind of right here. Yeah, almost. The like problem is almost. these crazy Antifa it's motherfuckers over on this side, yep. and then you got these crazy the fucking yep. neo-Nazi motherfuckers people. over here. The alt-right people, yep. fuck them, dude. Yep. Fuck I have them. nothing in common with either one of those people. Yep. I got more in common with the person that voted for Obama, and and wants to vote for Bernie Sanders. Good, good for you. Exactly. That's your, that's your right as an American. That's your it's for the. We live in a democratic republic. Great. It's not as bad as I think people are making it out to be as the media is and i know we keep going back to martial arts because that's like my thing but like you can you can feel the vibe in here dude no one gives a fuck if you're no you walk through those doors you're not red you're not blue you're not nothing the only color that really matters is the color of your belt and that's just an indicator of time and experience that did that doesn't like even put you on the on the pedestal you treat everybody the same you can see you can see my instructor helson gracie back here on the on the wall red belt grandmaster dude You've met Helson before. Yes. He's one of the most humble dudes on yeah, the planet. Yeah, you wouldn't. Dude. If he wasn't wearing his belt, you would think he's just. He's like your old cool uncle, man. Yeah, exactly. Cool as shit, dude. Yep. People are like, what do I call him? Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. Just call him Helson. That's his yeah, name. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that too. And people go, Mike, what do I call you at the dojo? <laughs> uh, Mike. Yeah. Mike. Mike. Michael, if you want. Stuart. Some Mikey. People, yeah. Some people call me Stuart. Yeah. If some, if people want to call me Coach Mike, I'm cool with that. Yeah. I like I like the coach thing. Yeah. But uh, all the. Professor, master, I don't yeah. know. It's, it's cool. Master, Some yeah. people like Professor Sauer, like Pedro Sauer. I'm cool with calling. I'm cool with calling Pedro Sauer Professor yeah, Sauer because he's of, a real fucking professor. Yeah, dude. that dude's like, an encyclopedia that's, that's of knowledge. That's my thing, though. Though, but here's the thing: I guarantee you, he didn't come up with that. Of course name. not. He's too humble to be like some nut rider. Was like, yo, someone was like, <laughs> no, seriously. Like, <laughs> you're right. I'm not a martial artist, so you're I'm right. saying this shit every time I go in like these feeds or go in these groups, and everybody's like. Grandmaster so and so, Professor so I'm like, dude, like, where's this person's PhD? Like, wh- you know, I don't know. I just like, it just blows me because I'm like, you guys are nut riding on these dudes and it's feeding their ego. And then those are the same guys I go shoot for that are like, yo, get my sword wall. And I'm like, <laughs> you're a fucking clown. I'm sorry. I'm probably going to lose a lot of clients, but whatever. Like, but you know what? Here's, and, and here's the thing, Corey. Like, good. Because the thing with me is that, uh, you got to do something? No, no. Just read my we, 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 nah, we got some place to go. Nah, my boy texted me. Nah, Get the fuck out of here. Ryan Anthony. Shout when are we going to wrap this up here? Yeah, no, no. I, look. I'm playing, dude. I don't no, give a shit. I know, but oh, fuck, it went away. Damn it. <laughs> what time is it? Bull anyway? crap. 14. Oh, Bull crap. Anyway. So, uh, shit show. Like you were saying, I've probably lost. You, you, you Like you said in the beginning, I've probably said some things in the past. Yes. I'm always where, texting where you're you, like, like, 
why would you post that on <laughs> literally you'll post like a fuck back like obama or not even anti whatever just like anything that's political i'm like mike stop like <laughs> you know like, i don't give a fuck like, i don't give a fuck i know you don't and that's the that's the glory and what i love about it is if if people are going to base their decision on on doing business with me or not and not don't want to come and learn what i have to teach them because you don't want of, them anyway. because of a facebook post you're too weak probably to last year yeah and those people man Look, and honestly, at this point, we've had enough success where, look, dude, like, I don't want the most students. I don't want the best students. I want the right, right students. Right students, yeah. And I don't want crazy fucking right-wing people. I bust on Trump just as bad as I busted on Obama, yeah. dude. I think Trump's a fucking idiot, dude. Yeah, I know. He's a dumbass. Um, like, I can't really point. There's a few things that he's done that are, like, some of the prison reform stuff I'm down with. Yeah. Um, but that's, like... It's also you know, Kim Kardashian. What are, what, are, what are they? What are they? Yeah, dude. Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, this is like a reality show, bro. It's like the movie Idiocracy. Yeah, dude. Remember Camacho? Yeah. Fucking uh, Terry Crews. Camacho. Yeah. Da, da, da. Like, I feel like Trump's kind of like it's that real. sometimes, bro. It's I'm real. like, this is like the Trump show. Yeah. It's it's, the it's very it's very odd. Yeah. What did he tell someone the other day? He told someone uh, he was like something of something about bullshit. That I think that's bullshit. Oh, really? Something crazy. He's saying bullshit yeah. or some. He's calling places. Look, anyway, it's it's just not. It's just not very presidential. But I talked when I talked to um, uh, what's her name, um, Catherine, who was the senior assistant to Clinton in during his old administration. I talked to her about Trump, and she, you know, was like, and we talked about how nice it is to kind of like have a disruptor in the office towards I agree with it's that. not a politician. Like, well, you know, I do agree with the fact that it is good to have a disruptor, but I'm I'm concerned about certain things, man. I do like the fact that he's very anti-war and that we're not I feel like we're getting less involved with that, but sure. that was his first term. Yeah. We'll see what we'll happens. We'll see. You know he's going to win again. I'm not I'm not like trying to be all political and stuff. He's already projected cuz he lost two and a half million I, popular votes which that vote doesn't I talk about anyways. this all the time and pe yeah. people get upset with me. I uh, I don't know if I want I would love you know who I want to win. Tulsi. That's my girl. That's my bro. girl. She's fucking That's awesome. That's my girl, man. dog. Yeah. I she's love the best. her. I love her. She's anti-war, but she's a fucking soldier and she knows and she was in a medic unit, dude. Yep. She's seen some shit. She's seen the cost of war, bro, her, every man. day. I love her. She's the she best. Wants she wants to legalize roasted beef. Roasted homegirl, too. Kamala Harris. Yeah. She, dude, she torched her, bro. She torched her. Granted, they only have like 12 seconds to respond. She torched her, though. Did you listen to her on Joe Rogan? Of course I did. She was love great. Her. She's Both been on there times. twice. Yeah, she's yeah. great, bro. Yeah. Did you listen to Bernie on Joe yeah, Rogan? I did, of course. Trash. Yeah. Fuck that guy. I know. He's terrible. His ideas Don't sound like great, guy. but Anthony Davies tore him and Andrew Yang apart. Like, uh, Let me explain to everybody how um, success in economics works. Okay, this was explained to me by one of my mentors, I forget who, but it's a really good analogy. Okay, so imagine a swimming pool <laughs> with a deep end and a shallow end, Okay. right? Now, you could wipe everyone back to zero tomorrow. Zero money in your bank account, zero cash savings, all your assets are stripped, and They've asked billionaires this. What would you rather have tomorrow? What would you rather have taken away? All of your connections and all of your friends or all of your money? And they're like, just take all my money. Because they know how to earn it back. Of course. See, making money is actually a skill. Unless you have inheritance. Yeah, which is that's like, that's, that's not a lot of no, people, man. No. Um, and even the people that gain inheritance, they have to be responsible with their money too. Otherwise, they'll spend it all. Yeah. So money's kind of like this is we could, we could wipe the slate clean tomorrow. And if we look at a swimming pool, the deep end of the swimming pool represents like economic growth. It's just going to – the people that have a depth of knowledge and have a depth of skills are going to take that – first layer of of money first and then on and on the people in the shallow end that have a very shallow depth of knowledge a very shallow understanding of how money works no connections no connections no friends they're, they're not very good networkers they have very low emotional intelligence um which if you haven't studied eq you need to be studying eq uh that's one of the biggest determining if you look at people that make a lot of money some of them have very iq high iqs or intelligence quotient mm -hmm. 
um, but most of them a very high emotional quotient. The ability to connect with people, the ability to lead people and, yeah. and create ideas and, and, and inspire people. These are the people that are making the most money on the planet. Yeah. So th if you lose your money, you're, you, the same people are going to get it back. They're going to get it right back. Of course. Dude. So all of this trying to create a quality of outcome bullshit is it's bullshit, dude. Be, now, if we have a president like Tulsi Gabbard, where we are not spending billions of fucking dollars in other countries and ruining yeah. people's lives over there and ruining the lives of soldiers that have to come back and deal. Because I teach a lot of soldiers that come back with PTSD, a lot of Marines and soldiers yeah. that come back with PTSD. A lot of friends. And it's hard for them, bro. Yeah. Dude, I've had friends that are like like being killed or like fucking come back and like they're, they're you know, you know Chris, what it is. Chris, our just Johnson. Remember Chris Johnson? My buddy died. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Sam's brother, dude. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that was, that was our generation is yeah. like we, our generation like, Went to war, man. Yep. Like a lot of kids that I knew, like that didn't go to college and didn't get into entrepreneurship, they went to the military not knowing that, oh, fuck, we're going to be in a 25 almost year war now. Yeah. 20 years. 20 years. Almost. Over 20 years. 2001. 2011. 2001. Well, technically, like 2001. 2000. Shit. You're right. Because now it's because I was. It's claw, bro. <laughs> edit that part out. <laughs> Don't edit it, but edit it. No, no, you're right. It's uh, no, but like back to Tulsi, man, bro. She, I, I liked Yang because he came on Rogan and I listened to what he had to say. And then I liked, and then I heard Tulsi and I was just like, she just, she says all the right things and not in like a political but way. But here's the problem. The left will oust her. What do you mean? She will never, she will never make it to the, to the I'm end. I'm surprised she's even democratic to be honest with you. She's got not, a lot not of, me, but that's what, listen, she's dude, got what, a lot of center. But Republican listen, what she's views. talking about is is what democrats it's traditionally right believe though. it's right i don't mean left or right i mean like it's like correct correct government. Yeah, yeah 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 she is a democrat listen dude she's talking about very democratic things not going to war yeah, yeah. legalizing weed across yeah. the board i think everybody's saying that now because it's like, i think if that's you gonna don't say it you're definitely, i think listen dude i think that's gonna be trump's power move at the end of I the think whole he's thing gonna do it, he's too. waiting to pull that out of his pocket and be like guess what yeah free legal weed Everywhere. for everybody yeah. and here's some aliens and too. maybe we'll forgive some of your college debt yeah motherfuckers <laughs> and then everyone awesome. will be like fuck yeah all the left is just gonna be just like, like all of us business owners fell for trump because business owners are only going to pay the tax. Your tax are going to go. But guess what? My costs for everything have fucking gone up yeah, man, no, because of these tariffs. That's yeah. what people see. People can't see the forest through the trees. I was excited when I got my taxes back and I'm like, fuck, I can write 20 percent more off of our expenses. That's Same. huge, bro. Yeah. Um, but then you look at how exp dude, everything went up in a higher everything from hiring people to uh, buy, buying Goods, a lot of like the shit that we get here comes from other countries. All of our geese and mats and shit like that, it's made, it's made in other countries. Yeah. So it's like, fuck, we still need these things. And, but the import, I mean like, I have my own gee company. Do you know how expensive it is to import this shit? And now it's even more expensive, Because of the tariffs. Bro. And like, we're all fucked up now because we're waiting on a gigantic order. Um, but because it's supposed to come in around the same time as 9-11, it set us back two weeks because customs goes through everyone's fucking during shit time, during that time. Damn, really? Just, yeah, think about it. That's interesting. That sucks. All right, well, I mean, so, yeah, so that's... Gabbard is definitely... I don't think she, I don't think any... I, I think Trump's going to win. He's projected already to lose by 5 million popular votes and still win because, obviously, like, Electoral College. But I don't think... Uh, Who can beat him? Who are they putting no out there? Like, That's why there's 22 the of them. One. She's the only one. Yeah, Biden's definitely that not could stand gonna. a chance. And he's talking Fuck about the Biden, buyback dude. and shit. Yeah, he kind of blew, blew me, dude. Like, I was really upset when I saw. That. And then I, I liked Yang, but then I saw his gun policy, and it's literally, uh, um, not mandatory, but it's a buyback system. It's this, it's that, it's all these. That's like, the one thing I'm not too crazy about Tulsi either. Her her, her, her gun, gun policy is, is too not, strict for me. It is. Every gun law is an, an infringement, folks. Yep. Every gun law is an infringement on your Second Amendment right. Yeah. And we're not like... What do people think is going to happen? We're, we're not like gun people, Let's people clarify that. We're not like toting fucking like... We don't have like bazookas. We're not like super like... Do -do -do. Like we're not... No. We're not. We're just protection and I defense think that non-felon, law-abiding citizens... And listen, dude. I'll, actually, you know, let me take that back. I have a friend that got busted for three ounces of weed fucking 
eight years ago. He's a felon. Yeah. Still a felon. Can never buy a gun. Has a hard time getting employment. Yeah. Because he's a, that's bullshit. Dude. Yeah. For weed. For fucking three that's ounces. Like, for things that's that, legal. That's legal now, dude. Yeah. Anything all like that these, should be abolished. All that shit should be expunged, bro. Yeah. Which she said she They should do. let everyone out of jail for nonviolent drug offenses yep. that are related to weed. And they should expunge all that shit. And, impl- and they should make a law that now that it's legal, you can't. Um, deny them. someone employment or fire them based on on uh, weed. Yeah. It's fucking it weed, is, dude. It is stupid. Look at the huge problems that we have with other drugs in this country, bro. We were just talking about before we got started, man. This is like the seventh or eighth friend of mine that's died from a from an Heroin. OD or yeah. either OD or suicide related to depression created by overuse of opiates. What did you hear on Rogan? The dude Ed Ed. Uh, uh, the ex federal guy, he talked about why we have we have so much fentanyl and heroin now was because we legalized marijuana in most places. So the cartel had to shift what they were selling to recoup that money that they lost for the marijuana. So that's why we've seen such a high demand and uh, influx of fentanyl and heroin. So go back to making weed illegal. No, go back to making all drugs legal and decriminalize. Absolutely. Decriminalize the fuck out of every drug. And here's the thing, dude. Like we were talking before, like I trained quite a few high-level police officers yeah. in here. The dudes that really take the job seriously don't give a no, fuck they about don't. weed, and they don't really give a fuck if someone's got like a little bit of coke or something yeah. like that. It's the they're they after the, the big, big fish, fish, bro. Yeah, yeah dude. They're exactly. after. They got bigger fish to fry, yeah. man. And they they're want, not just they gonna like pinch you to be like, oh, you know, rat on your boy either. They're just you're nothing. You're you are literally nothing when it comes to the giant picture of what they're trying to take down. And and. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Like I said before, you cannot illegalize intent. Nah. People that are suffering from deep emotional scars and problems and fucked up family lives and shit like that. Sorry. You could. If, uh, if, if, if you could make, you could make, okay, well, look at prison, for example. Oh, dude, I'm talking They to make a, shit in the fucking look, jail. I'm about to interview next week this guy, a professor, about prison reform and prison, just how how they're like a business and all this other shit. So that's going to be fucking interesting. Speaking of prisons, I have trained quite a few people in corrections as well. Oh. And I asked them what they think about this Epstein shit, like how likely oh, it is that he actually killed himself. At a prison that hasn't had a suicide in over 20 21 years. 21 years? Mm-hmm. Right. The yeah, cameras yeah. were... The cameras were not working you, off. Listen, he was on suicide watch and they took him off. And like, why? Yeah, exactly. So I don't think he's. So dead. I asked one of my guys. You saw asked, my shit that I posted on your stuff. Anyways. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I asked one of my guys that uh, worked in corrections for like fucking fifteen years. I was like, "Have you ever seen someone on suicide watch kill themselves?" And he said, "One guy." So they, they uh, and I wasn't familiar with this term. Apparently it's called four pointing where you're like locked in the chair, like Hannibal Lecter, bro. Okay. Had a helmet on with a chin strap. Somehow like wiggle. So he's like connected with all four points. I guess that's why they, with his hands and his what? legs somehow wiggled down and fucking choked himself with his, with the chin strap from the helmet when no one was paying attention. What? Because they can go unsupervised for like I think like fifteen minutes at a time, something yeah. like that. And in that time, they were like, "Okay, he can't move. Like he's he's, he's no good. way." Fucking hung himself like that, bro. How can you hang? That's that's because I was saying like Epstein is like he's six feet tall or taller than that, and like the when you're on. It reminds me of the scene in The Wire when they try to make the dude hang himself off yeah. the doorknob. Like, but, come on, dude. This but he is wasn't such even bullshit. on suicide watch when he died. He was on Suicide Watch, and then he was off. And my one buddy, and, and, the, and my later. one buddy posted a picture of what like his the, the cell that he had like looked at. Yeah. Listen, they give them clothes and shit like that, mm-hmm. and like bed sheets yeah. and like stuff that, that they can't hang themselves. No, with. well, the bed sheets are made out of paper towels, so mm-hmm. if you did try to hang yourself, it would break. Um, and you're in a robe when you're on Suicide Watch. You're in like a like the doctor's thing, but like a different one that's like even less. It will tear yeah, if exactly. you, it has any pressure. Yeah, so, but the, I had a guy comment. I don't know if it was on your post or not, but he was like, oh, no, it was on Derek Redmond's post. And he's like, I worked in a bunch of prisons and blah, 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 and I've, and, and I've never seen anyone. And I'm like, yeah, well, I don't know, bro. It just, when you have probably the most high-profile person in, 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 in recent history, 
like him that could he open could have up brought a can down of the whole worm. farm, dude. Exactly. I just think that, like, you know, I I personally think he's not dead. There's a I don't, I th- theory. I think that here's the other thing. Go. Why did the feds raid his house two days after he died? Why didn't why don't you why don't you get a subpoena for a warrant and raid the house the second that you get a fucking because those things. First off, the reason why I think. No, I, th- I want to know if anyone knows that I want to know. I want to know why they weren't able to subpoena warrant Be- the day they arrested him and go search that thing. Of course, dude. I mean, I know that's the, why. But what I'm saying is. I think the reason why they faked his death is because they can expedite all of those things. The reason why, so if he's dead, they can go do whatever the fuck they want. They don't have right. to wait for a judge to serve them a warrant and issue a warrant to go do those things. They can just go ham and do whatever the fuck they want. So you think that they took him out and then they scrubbed the place basically for those two days yeah. and then they sent the feds. Have you seen the drone footage? I did. I saw. I watched another one of it yesterday. You see that sun? Creepy as fuck, that dude. Sun, what the dude? fuck is With going the on? With chairs around it? What's going on And then there? The, the Israeli like looking temple that has the beds laid around it. It's nothing what but mattresses. What the fuck's going on in there, bro? Bruh, bruh. This is terrifying for me because I have children. I know, yeah. And some crazy statistic, like a child's abducted, like every couple minutes. I forget the I forget the number, but that's crazy. That's bro. insane, dude. Listen, dude. Some of the Howard County police that 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 train here and, and work here, yeah. Um. Busted like a big uh, ring at the fucking mall, Columbia Mall. What? They were scooping girls up at the mall, bro. Nice dress, sharp dress guys. Hey, you can make a lot of money. So like, taking you know, shit. Like, I got I got some modeling things you can do. Just like taking, uh, uh, you know, come hang out with me. Yeah, they put the they put a uh, they 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 had like a um, what do you call it? Like a couple liaisons from uh, like like higher up departments and shit like that too. Like what do they call it? Like different counties. Like it was like a multi unit sure, sure. like effort like yeah, to yeah. do it. You know, really, like state police, Howard County. Yeah, yeah. I think like the guy that was in charge of it though was a I want to say he was a Montgomery County cop. But what, He's got some crazy stories, bro. How would they? Um, so, like, would they send someone like a like a dummy in to like get abducted, or would they like set him up? Like, how, do you know any details or no? I don't really know any details about that. Yeah, you probably, why would you? They're probably not made public. Anyways. They can't really talk about a lot of that stuff because they. It's a lot of those things are ongoing too. They of don't, course, you can't. If they talk give about out information, on. then yeah, of course, it fucks their whole shit yeah. up. No, I just. But back to Epstein, though. Here's my theory, right? I don't think he's dead. Where's his body? I know. I think that shows he, the body. What did they lose the body? Like they lost Osama bin Laden's body over the side over of the, the boat? Yeah, yeah. Over <laughs> in the aircraft. Come carrier. on, no, man. I think what I'm saying. What I'm or saying. The aircraft is, carrier. That's yeah, right. What I'm saying is, I think that he would have been killed by Clintons. Or I'm not. Listen, I'm not trying to say the Clintons killed him. I'm not trying to say any of that stuff. Somebody would have wanted him dead because because the this, this things that came out sealed, unsealed were. I mean, MIT professors, um, senators, yep. congressmen, whatever. And he had cameras everywhere. I know. So there's a ton of ton, and, the investigation's already been done. That's what I'm saying. Right. So my point is, I don't think he's dead. I think whoever wants to keep him alive swooped in, faked his death, so he can on the inside still be telling them things, so they can mm. go find and still indict mm. these people. Watch. That's hopeful thinking. I watch. Uh, Maxwell. She'll be next. His girl. Uh, I don't oh, know how yeah, to say her yeah. first name. She'll either. Be, be found dead or she will be she'll be indicted next and she'll be arrested because she was the ma- madam yep. for the entire she was like, yep. thing um so she's just did you watch the youtube dec- documentary like actually listen to the girls no. talk dude watch that really it's on youtube yeah man yeah dude there's like there's like i fucked up uh there's like seven or eight different girls that talk and they all have the same story that's what I'm saying. They it's all the same Kelly story, shit, bro. bro. Like, you don't have 40 people that are saying this. They're just making the shit up. Like, come on, dude. Maybe it's you. Yeah, you know exactly. Look in the fucking mirror, bro. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you what. Um, I talked. Um, I'm not going to say who, but I talked to someone, and they said that it very well likely, though, could have been Epstein is running this whole thing and then has dirt on certain people. And it's like him working, like, kind of. He's the master. He's Get me the, out of here. Exactly. Or I'm going to fucking rap. Yeah. I mean, well, he got five hundred million dollars from where? Uh, I heard that he inherited that island. He he, he inherited he inherited the uh, how the townhome in New York from uh, the guy who I think owns Victoria's Secret. It was like a it was like a ninety six million dollar. It was like a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, town Just home. have this. Yeah, you see the painting of Clinton. You think that's real? Did you? I think it's real. I mean, I don't know. I think 
the, he's like in the blue dress and he's like fucking weird. It's fucking weird, dude. But I mean, I think it's true because look at this fucking island, bro. The, the drone flies over and you see like a sun. So and like it, yeah, yeah. That due north. Sur- like, how, how creepy it looked. That's creepy, bro. Yeah, why, it's creepy. Why as would it you looked- have that? What religion is that? Satan. It's from saying. It's not. It's not like any. It's. It's nothing. It's like. It's some fucked up shit. So I have friends that are like deep into the conspiracy world, bro. Like deep, deep. Me too. Deep, I got a deep. guy where I get all my shit from, and he's like mad fucking smart, bro. He's like some some like Eddie Bravo, Alex Jones shit. Like, <laughs> but he's like, it's like damn, like that makes a lot of fucking sense. And the thing where Alex Jones fucks himself is he's so crazy about so much shit that he's wrong about. Well, he says that, he's that, crazy. That when he's right, it's like. He you talked don't about even Epstein want to believe it. Years ago. Years ago, bro. Years ago. He's been named on. him years I know, dude. ago. He's been on it. Yeah. He's been on it. Wow. And he talked about the genetically uh like all like the So the, here's what oh, okay. I've talking. heard I've heard Jones talk about, I've heard other people talk too, that a big part of these like cults or whatever they are is uh like human sacrifice and yes. drinking and drinking human blood, blood specifically blood from children Mm -hmm. when they i guess experience like a very i guess it would be cortisol which would be like certain levels of fear they terrorize them so that they're so that they get flooded with this certain and then it would be and And then they drink adrenaline almost and it's like this adrenaline that's what it is and uh and uh no yeah i've heard they like you think that's real i think it is i think a lot of what Alex. if you're willing to rape a fucking kid then you probably would have no problem drinking blood you know the guy in england right have you heard about him? Jimmy Savile. Don't get me started. That's his name, right? It was Jimmy Savile. The, the flamboyant guy? Bro, that shit's... On the boats? For anyone that's never looked at this documentary, this is real shit. Look up Jimmy Savile in the Ninth Circle. It is the most fucking horrible shit that you will ever... Dude, I had to turn it off at certain yeah. points and be like, no, dude. Yeah. They didn't do that, did they? Yeah. With the boats, the last the journey? The boats, the last journey, yeah. yeah. Fuck <laughs> that shit, man. I tell man. people about that all the time. Take kids out to the boat, and it's unbelievable. Yep, it's but it actually, actually happened. Stranger than fiction, and bro. He, and he's t- and he's tight. He's affiliated with the queen, the royal family, the, the queen. Royal fa- they knighted yeah. his ass, bro. I know, bro. They turn him into a knight. Fuck that guy, man. Yep. Fuck all these fucking people. Yep. Dude. And, t- and it's and he worked. He did the same listen, thing Sandusky that, did. And and I, dude. And here's the thing, dude. It makes me that kind of shit specifically makes me so fucking angry, because you know we're in a position here. Where people are trusting us with their children, you yeah, know what dude, I'm saying? Yeah, and you take advantage that, of that. And you've seen, and you've seen me, bro. I've called out child molesters in, in, yeah. in the. In the we got a guy shut down up here, Scott Noggle. Yep. Fuck you, Scott Noggle. <laughs> we got him shut down because he I was a fucking. You. He's a pedophile. He was a pedophile, bro. Yeah. He he molested his own daughter apparently. Yep. He taught my daughter, bro. One of her first seminars she ever came to. She was like this big. One of the first times in the gi. He was on the mat with me helping. You know how horrible that makes me feel. That's we didn't fun. know. We had no yeah. idea. Yeah, but. These people hide in plain sight. They do. That's like the. And that's what's terrifying. What's his name? Uh, uh, Sandusky. What he he had uh, multiple, just like dude in England had like access. They had access to multiple um, uh, homeless shelters and children. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, orphanages. Orphanages. And they would literally funnel these fucking kids through that yep. shit, bro. It's fucking sick. sick. Kids, kids that are forgotten already. They got no parents. Yep. And this is like, dude, like. This is why I'm so big on like parents doing their fucking job. Because yeah, that's a big part of it. Because like look man, I look at I look in the eyes. I never blame the victim. Yeah. But I'll blame your fucking parents. All day. Fuck your parents, dude. I look in the eyes of every one of those girls where they interviewed for the Epstein shit. Yeah. And I'm like no one let no one ever loved these girls because yeah. if they were really shown true love and affection and stability and opportunity they wouldn't they wouldn't feel the need to do this now no. every now and then i know people that come from great families that just they fall off bro yeah. we're all responsible for own decisions after a certain age and, and whatever but like dude come on no girl asked for that no. type Fuck of life no, and no kid asked for that bro no. and, and and the people are like and we're saying girls these are kids yeah these children. are children these are children these aren't like 25 year old no. working women no. these are fucking like no these are fucking like nine minors olds, 12 year olds well they said as young as like yeah as long as like 10 or 13 mm-hmm. but average like 14 15 be like oh and i dude some of the disgusting shit that i've seen on some of these posts well she looks older yeah bro but she's, but not. she's not she's fucking 15 yeah, yeah. that's still like i see it every because i because i teach kids a 15 year old bro 
they're 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 more mature than like a fucking little kid, of course, but they're still a child. Yeah, bro. dude. Your what do they say? Your brain is not fully developed. I think until like twenty eight, something 30. like that. Yeah, to your thirty. I think it's thirty two in men. And then you gotta think. In women, it's earlier. And yeah. then you gotta think, what drugs are they feeding these poor yeah, girls bro. and kids to keep them they're zombified them yep. so that they can't? So that dude, it's fucking terrible. like like listen. When you watch that, like, I'm not trying to go crazy, but like when you when you watch like Taken, for instance, when you see him busting those doors and the girls on the bed and drugged. Like, that's like real. The filmmakers aren't just like, hey, you know what? What can we add here to make it like really cool? No, that's some real fucking shit. They don't even have. To they make got it. that from from factual things that's happened. So like, it's crazy, man. I don't know, yeah, we're fucking going down a fucking depressing ass fucking. Yeah, it is a little depressing, it like is. you know. But but you know, I think it's important to talk about because again, at the end of the day, parents do your job. One hundred percent, I agree. Keep an eye on your fucking kids. Keep an eye who they're talking to on the fucking internet. Yep. In oh, fact, for sure. In fact, we're going to do a class here, like I was telling you before. One of my students is the head of all the internet mm -hmm. crimes. He's actually going to do a class for the kids and for the parents to talk about internet safety. That's awesome. Dude, there's shit that the parent, that he was telling me, like these websites that these kids can go on to and shit like that, that I, and I'm pretty like with the times, dude. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like I think, a, I have savvy. Facebook, I have yeah. Instagram, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. You know, I haven't really gone down the Snapchat path yet, yeah, but yeah. you know, you're, but whatever. You're hip. You're hip. I'm trying, man. I'm yeah. trying to stay relevant. And I talk to my students, and, like, I hear, I hear what the, 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 the kids and the teens are into, and, like, they've infiltrated, pedophiles have infiltrated certain video games on Xbox Live. Oh, no, I've seen that. I've seen that before, yeah. Crazy, dude. Yeah. No, they've, that's what I'm saying, just like with the gun shit, if you, if you want to do something. You're you cannot gonna, illegalize intent. Yeah, no, you're going to find you, a way. And what you need to do for people that violate these things, bro, you need to, like, straight up, like, neuter them so that yeah. they're not Those capable the of doing it again. Them, motherfuckers, but here's the thing, like, like, you can't. You can't make enough laws to curb abhorrent behavior. Nah. At a certain point, and this is kind of like, I don't know, maybe the theme of, of what we've been talking about is like personal self-accountability, man. The ability to defend yourself. The ability to filter what you're putting into your mind and have accountability. And, and, and make choices for yourself. Protect your own family. You know how many times I've ever called the cops? Fucking Never, dude. You know yeah, why? Because I've never needed to. Yeah. I can handle myself. I don't yeah. need to call the fucking cops. Now, if if I ever need to, much I dude, I work with the police. I respect the police. Yeah. I'll I'll no disrespect intended, but like that's 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 how you should want to be. If uh shit went to hell in a handbasket tomorrow, we have a recession, which we are headed toward, and everything collapsed. What the fuck would people do? Yeah, do, do? Does the average person know how to purify water? Does the average person oh, know how to hunt dude. and kill and trap their own I don't food? Even know how to, do any how of to that fish? I'll be fucked. How to how to fire a gun? Yeah. How to clean a gun or how to fix a gun if it breaks? Yeah. How to fix a car if it breaks? How to use certain different types of organic fuels for in, in 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 certain types of cars? What works where? And also, again, bro. It's like the video games, like remember Fallout, how you like have yeah. to up your like intelligence, your ability again, EQ, emotional, your emotional quotient, emotional intelligence. Read Emotional Intelligence 2.0, everybody. It's the best game changing book. Emotional yeah. Intelligence 2.0, dude. It's a game changer. Right, I'll read that shit. I'll I'll, uh, I'll let you it. log into my it. Audible. I say the can, Audible uh, shit, yeah, dude. I fuck with that's that. That's what I fuck with too. Yeah. I, I don't, I, can, I don't have the, I don't like you said. I'm ADD. I can't yeah. sit down and. I got a ton read. of books, but I'm like ah. I got to audible it, dude. I'd rather listen to a podcast. Well, we drive a lot, too. I mean, you're I around that D.C. Baltimore traffic. You're driving. fucking driving. Yeah. I work at home, but. But um, <laughs> the main thing for me is, like, dude, be accountable. Learn self-sufficiency. How to protect yourself. How to provide for yourself. How to protect your family. Look, dude, the more you depend on the government, the more you're just going to be disappointed, bro. 100%. They're fucking terrible I, at everything. I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. So where can people find you, Mike Stewart? RealJujitsu.com. Um, the name of the academy is Gracie Jiu Jitsu Maryland, and uh, we are here in Columbia, Maryland. We also have a location in Finksburg, Maryland, and also a location in Severna Park, Maryland. Nice. Our affiliate, uh, Kogan Dojo. And uh, we're looking at opening another one here pretty soon. But I also have a gi company called Grindstone Grappling, the best uh, Jiu Jitsu gis on the planet. GrindstoneGrappling.com. Yeah, they're, they're tight. I don't Did know anything about like, gis and stuff like that, but they look fucking sick. We put a lot of work into that, yeah. into that gi. And. Um, Yep, that's really all I do, man. Yeah, no. Well, what, you would you would come back, right? You, I mean, I would come to you. you Fuck would do yeah, thing, dude. Yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah man. Come through, Let's but, do it. Let's do yeah. it at the uh, 
either my house or the other dojo next yeah. time. Yeah, right. or you can go to my house. I'll you come can, to your house. Yeah. I haven't been in DC in a yeah, minute, come, dude. Come to North. I'll come to your house. Yeah, we'll come hang out house. down there. We'll fucking, we'll hang out with my dog Boomer. Dude, we could do this. We could go for another hour, man. But we I got, know we could. We really could. We really we got could classes in like no- five minutes. No, nah, we got classes in thirty minutes. It would be a madhouse in here if oh, we had shit. classes in in five minutes. Fuck. All right. Well, yeah, we got to get out of here so the rest of the staff can do their thing. This is gonna be my longest podcast. Fuck yeah, man. Dude, good luck. Hell yeah. Thanks for coming through, and that's another episode for the E4 Explosive Podcast. See you next time.